Investing is the act of lending your money to a company so that they can improve their business and earn you a return. Companies look to borrow money when they are starting off or looking to expand. But how do they go about raising the funds? And more importantly, how do investors get their money back? We'll answer these questions and more on today's Plain Bagel. Some people may believe that large companies such as Microsoft and Apple have enough money to do with as they please. But the truth is they often need extra funding. Maybe they want to start some research and development or pursue a new venture. The cost of such activities is pretty high. So companies look to borrow money from investors. And the first method through which they do this is by borrowing it through debt. Companies accumulate debt through the sale of bonds, which are the agreement between you, the loaning party, and the company. The company sells you the bond and agrees to pay you an interest rate, which is a percentage of the borrowed amount, once a period, until the bond matures, meaning that the borrowed amount is due to be paid back. Bonds are typically long-term investments, and they can be outstanding for upwards of 30 years, though they do come in a variety of time lengths. Now, before you get too excited about your newfound ability to have large corporations indebted to you, you should note that you won't be getting the 20% interest rate that your credit card balance is currently charging you. A safe investment in bonds is more likely to earn you a return below 5%. Probably seems like a ripoff, right? It actually makes sense when you think about it. The interest rate that you're charged is a function of your ability to pay back the debt once it's due. Imagine two people want to take out a $1,000 loan with a 10% interest rate from their local bank. Their financial situation is identical, except that one of the individuals currently has a credit card balance outstanding that they need to pay off. If the bank could only choose one of the people to lend the money to, they would likely choose the person without the credit card balance because they are more capable of paying back the money once it's due. If the individual with the credit card balance wanted to incentivize the bank to give them the loan instead, they would have to offer to pay a higher interest rate to compensate the bank for the added risk they pose. This is an example of the fundamental risk return relationship you see in investments. The higher risk that an investment poses to an investor, the more return it should offer them. As such, when it comes to bonds, companies are often viewed as posing less default risk than individuals, which allows them, along with other factors, to borrow at a lower interest rate. Despite this, bonds are a pretty popular investment because the borrowing company is legally obligated to always pay their debts. If they don't, they could face legal action and bankruptcy. Now, it's important to note that not all bonds are created equal. When a bond is sold, it's given a seniority ranking. In the event that a company does go bankrupt, the more senior bonds are able to recover their losses first before less senior bonds can try and regain any lost value. To compensate for this, however, the less senior bonds are paid a higher interest rate. In addition to seniority, the risk return characteristic of a bond is impacted by the issuing organization. The safest bonds available are government bonds, which are bonds sold for the funding of government activities. These bonds pay fairly low interest rates and are considered virtually risk-free because in theory, if the government was not able to make its debt payments, it could simply charge its citizens more taxes to make up the difference. The second category is corporate bonds, which are bonds that belong to relatively large or stable companies. These bonds are considered safe, but because even the largest of institutions faces the risk of defaulting on their debt, they have to pay a higher interest rate than government bonds. The politically correct title for the third category is high yield bonds, though they're commonly referred to as junk bonds, because that's essentially what they are. These are bonds that belong to new or unstable companies that have a high risk of defaulting on their debt, and so they need to pay their investors a higher interest rate. People who buy these types of bonds are essentially gambling on whether the company will last long enough to pay back the debt. There's a high probability of losing money, but if you choose the right companies, the payoffs are high. So now that you know what type of bonds exist out there, how do you actually make money off of them? Well, aside from making an interest payment on a regular basis, bonds actually offer a second source of return. If you as an investor wanted to get out of your debt agreement with the company, you could actually sell your bond to a secondary investor. The investor would pay you for the bond and then receive your future interest payments in your place. The interesting thing, however, is that the market value of the bond, meaning the price at which you could sell it, actually changes over time. If factors move in your favor, you could sell the bond that you purchased for $1,000 for even more money down the road. 
This is because the value of a bond actually has a negative relationship with the interest rates being paid by other companies in the market. Sound confusing? Look at it this way. Let's say that you buy a government bond for $1,000 that pays 3% once a year. And a month down the road, the government decides that, based on various factors, it will pay a higher interest rate of 5% on all future bonds. This would decrease the market value of your bond. For the same $1,000 you used to purchase your 3% bond, you could have purchased a 5% bond if you bought it current day. This means that if you ever wanted to resell your bond to someone, you would have to offer it at a discounted price, given that your bond is less attractive than the 5% bond. The flip side is also true. If you buy a bond and interest rates go down, your bond will become more valuable, because it now offers a higher than normal interest rate. This means that you could sell your bond at a premium price. Your bond's value may also increase or decrease when its credit risk, or the risk of the debt not being paid, changes. For example, if a bond is upgraded from a junk bond status to a corporate bond status, it will likely appreciate in value. This market value, however, only matters if you trade your bond before its maturity. If you don't need to cash out early or aren't interested in chasing extra return, then you can simply hold on to your bond and receive the initially borrowed amount from the company at maturity. So now you know a bit more about bonds and how you can use them to improve your wealth. But when you think of investing, you probably think of shares and stocks. We'll talk about that in our next video, but for now we're out of time. If you like this video, please leave a like, and if you like what we're doing, please subscribe. If you have any feedback or topics you'd like us to cover in future videos, please leave a comment down below. For The Plain Bagel, my name is Richard Coffin. Thanks for joining me today.